You ready for a movie? Cause you missed it! My name is Zach, as you might know already if you've been listening to the previous episodes. Um, and I got a, I got a movie for everybody today. This is a, this is a new type of movie for everybody. I think everybody can probably agree on that. It's called Tetsu the Iron Man. That's what it's called. It's from, uh, released on Canada Day in 1989, which was actually 17 days before I sprung up into this earth. So the movie was like a, uh. It was, a, it was a of Zach's arrival. It was, it, was, it was an omen of an Zach's omen. arrival. Yeah, that's what it was. So this was this is stories about me. <laughs> makes um, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like, oh, it's all Suddenly, it's now. all becoming clear. <laughs> um, yeah. So this movie, uh, directed by uh, Shinya Tetsumoto, um, it's a Japanese film. Uh, you know, really creative, but like super crazy, super weird. Um, you know, kind of one of a kind type of vision. Um, you know, and that's that's why it's one of my favorite films of all time, and I love the, uh, you know, the score and things like that. But I, I don't really want to get too much into it. I don't want to get into the story or anything. I, I more just want to kind of get straight to you guys because I really want to hear what you guys have to think about it. But before we get to that, we're going to get to the social media, which, you know, we'll mention all the different social medias, but the main one is Jack's Mail's Box. Right? Oh, you, you send it to Jack's Mail Box. You can send it straight there. And then you can do these if, if, you know, things don't work out. Or if you want to send yeah. additional mail, too. Just I mean, uh, send him a drill dick. Drill I mean, dick. Drill. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Drill penis. I don't know what's real anymore. P- penis. <laughs> penis? Penis. <laughs> drill rod. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, Alex, you got the social medias. Who's doing the social media plug-in? Hey, it's your episode, man. My episode. All right, well, go to Facebook. <laughs> you missed it. Look, go to go to go to Instagram. Take sexy photos. Send to the Facebook. Go to I don't know what the fuck do we have mailbox. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> um, you can find us on iTunes. You can find SoundCloud. us on SoundCloud. You can find us on Twitter at YMI underscore podcast. You can find us on Facebook and all the stuff that Zach listed so horribly. Continue on mailbox. <laughs> yeah, that's, my, that's what you and, and I guess my mailbox yeah, and grinder. Right. And oh, oh, we can't forget about Grinder. We're on yes. Grinder. As yeah. of this episode. Yeah. Because of this episode. Because of this one. Well, we want to be available to everybody, so it's Tinder and Grinder. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. You got to make yourself available. You got to put yourself out there. You know? So, yeah. So, this is this was a film. Um, and I actually, you know, was actually lucky enough to see this on the big screen, actually, one what? time. Mm. Believe it or not. Rio Theater. The only reason it was there was because the Soska twins were in town and they were like, we got this fucked up movie. And I was like the only, I was the only one, I kid you not, in the audience who had seen it besides the Soska twins. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Cause they, they brought me up on stage like briefly and stuff. And they were like, oh, so what's your, like, what's the moment that like freaks you out the most or something like that. And I forget what he said, but that's the wrong question to ask you yeah, <laughs> with this movie. Yeah. But it was like. It was like, yeah, I was the only person in the entire audience to see it. And I was like, holy shit, this is going to blow some people's minds for better or for worse. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I could be taking a risk with picking this movie for this channel, too, because I realize it's out there and it's a tad different yeah. from the other films we've watched. So, But I'm really curious to hear what people have to say about this. So, Before that, you mentioned mm-hmm. you saw it at the Rio. I, I did. Just, just wanted, I don't know who's listening mm-hmm. around Vancouver, but... Uh, the Rio's at risk of, of go, uh, potentially going away at some point. Yeah. Uh, and right now, uh, they're still collecting signatures to help. Uh, basically, they're trying to, to save themselves because uh, the zoning for that theater, they're saying movie theater, but it doesn't guarantee they have to keep a movie theater, but it doesn't guarantee they have to keep uh, something like the Rio. Right. They could do something different. So mm-hmm. they could end up going away, and that's a big piece of Vancouver's history. Mm-hmm. They've been around for an insanely long amount of time. Like it's uh, it's iconic when it comes to Vancouver. So, I mean, there's an online petition and yeah. and supporting them now, if possible, with just going to events and things like that. And yeah, now would be the time. So if yeah, if just a reminder to anybody, but uh, if if you're from Vancouver, but yeah. I, I signed it. I mean, I, I did too. Mm-hmm. I signed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a good thing to sign because I mean, and a lot of people yeah, are backing it up. But the more people, obviously, it shows like how important it is to the city and to the individuals, right? And, last mm-hmm. I saw, they were at 
thirteen thousand signatures. Something Probably, like that. yeah. So they're still going, and it's going pretty uh, quick. But uh, yeah, now yeah, they're saying themselves, yeah, now's the time to, yep. to kind of help and. I hope Kevin Smith us, right? actually gets to come. Kevin Smith, too. He yeah, he's even yeah. on board. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, hell, even if you're not from Vancouver, you come and visit, go check out the Rio. Right? Yeah. It's an awesome place to see pretty much anything. You're going to have a good time, good crowds. Yep. Yes. It's also recently mm-hmm. iconic um, for, for those who don't know, for where James Franco um, first saw the room and met uh, Greg Sestero to end up, and from there led to the the movie The Disaster Artist. Yeah, so, so if the Rio didn't exist, you never would have gotten your Disaster Artist no. movies, guys. So you and, know, and also if you know if uh, the Rio didn't exist, I wouldn't have seen this movie on the big screen. There's a lot of movies. Exactly. Well, that's the whole. I think what's the best thing about the Rio is that you can see certain movies you thought you would never see in the big yep. screen. I think you... it's that and the crowds, like the atmosphere. Oh, yes. It's yes. such a unique atmosphere that you don't get. At any theater, I, I, I no. haven't had it at even even the the Cinematheque. like Cinematheque, yeah. like ones that are uh, like art house fil- like art yeah. house theaters and things like that. The crowds are respectful, and nice and stuff, but you don't get like a genuinely fun, good crowd like you do at the Rio. It's they get different. The best it's very different, right? I mm-hmm. mean, you you go to the Cinematheque for one thing, you go to the Rio for another. But the Rio definitely has that you know kind of neat medium where it has like certain films you'd never think you would see like you had mentioned jack like ran the fact that yeah. we saw ran yeah on the big screen last year and it was just like oh my god just yeah that just, blew you away big time too. oh yeah that was yeah. uh just seeing that in its full glory was just unreal yeah and uh no it's great and then even seeing like films like you know, best friends. What other theater yeah. is going to show that in Vancouver? Cinematheque you know? wouldn't. And exactly. that's the thing. Like, like they could play Ram, they could play, but it's like strictly art house, right? Whereas Rio doesn't really have a code. No, nope. they kind of just do what their the own audience thing. wants. Yeah. They're they're what they want to put on. They're perform. They're open to suggestion. Uh, they're canteen they're, they're, rules. They really are part of the community, and that's what makes them special because I agree. they they actually show what the community wants or what they're interested in. They try to gauge everything, and they're they're very good. That and the way. community gets involved with the Rio as well, totally. with all the burlesque shows and all yeah, that. Their like, performances, it's, it's great. they got live, they got everything. They're not just a movie theater. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. so much more than that. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, surprised you didn't pick on me there. I said the canteen is awesome. I just ignore <laughs> New Brunswick isms. Yeah. <laughs> so we and translate. Should... We should have a link to the online petition on Facebook and SoundCloud. Sure. Right, yep. Help yeah. to boost their their signatures from 13,000 to 13,020. There you go. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just throw the petition link on there. We'll throw the petition link on there and then Absolutely. Like, can sign it. But uh, yeah, save the Rio. Save uh, the that's, Rio. That's that. So uh, where are we starting, Zach? Well, Am basically I... the question is, Andrew, would you petition to bring this movie to more people or would you petition against it and put it into the I don't really you? want to go first. Like... <laughs> I don't think any of us wants to go first. It's, like, just... it's a film. I don't even it's know what film. to say. Uh, just yep. Cause, I, cause I, I recognized it just because I was over at your place before. Yeah. You had some fragments of this film. You had seen pieces. You had seen one, one or two full scenes. Yeah. There's like basically said. the intro, uh, the one specific scene, in its entirety and kind of the end bit uh, i remember yeah because i was basically bag tired we watched some other movies and i just i was not uh, it was like a fever dream because i just i i was way too tired i was took a nap and i was just waking up throughout it so it was burnt in my memory as this weird it, it was like a dream it felt like that was a part of the dream that movie so and then why i can't honestly saying watching it now it doesn't feel very much different. It still feels like it's <laughs> a of dream. Amen to that. So, uh, dream. holy shit. Um, I'll start with positives then. Because uh, <laughs> that's a good place to start, I think. Uh, uh, the score is really cool. That's probably, um, it, it sounds very Nine Inch Nails. You were saying that their Nine Inch Nails were inspired by this. Mm-hmm. That kind of makes sense. It's very industrial. Uh, and I dig it because I, I like that sound. So mm-hmm. that's always going to jive with me. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Uh, I thought, yeah, the visuals were really cool. Like I was saying, like a, it was like a Nine Inch Nails music video, which is really awesome, uh, awesome to look at visually. Uh, there was a lot of body horror in it, and I, I think it really depends what your opinion is of body horror, whether you're going to enjoy this or not. Like if you're cool and you enjoy watching things that have body horror in them, then you'll, you know, it. Then you'll like parts of this you'll like what they do because it's really in, it's uh really interesting body horror 
Whereas if you're, you know, just uncomfortable with it, you just don't have a good time. You're not going to like, no. like what they do because it makes you really uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable just naturally, which is right. a torn. I'm torn because I know that's what they're going for. Yeah. But it's also not like the most pleasant of experiences when you're sitting there and you're like, yeah, I just feel uneasy. You know, you don't feel like, like, oh, I can't snack. I can't eat. It didn't turn you on gross. when he put that metal rod in his leg and maggots were coming Yeah, it was a good, that, that was, was a good setup for what, it, it was a good indicator of what to expect from that movie in mm. the first 10 seconds. You yeah. know, you're like, oh yeah, this is uh, okay. Yeah, this is this, this is what this movie is going to be. Um yeah so i i did think that the visuals were really cool the music was really cool the visuals were really cool i kind of dug the story a little like i liked uh parts of the story i like the idea that uh it was kind of neat like the twist of of oh uh the car the idea that all of these characters are connected in this weird way right and they almost treat like metal as a as a virus like Mm -hmm. it's it'll infect and turn everybody into metal and I, i think that's a cool uh, that's just a cool idea and i like the ending a lot actually i thought yeah. that the, the ending was really cool the idea that it's like oh you've created this mm-hmm. this monster now and now he's almost like a like another japanese monster right right yeah. and that was cool um so i thought all of that was cool but yeah i don't know just like an overall pretty uncomfortable <laughs> experience and i can't say that it's like i i don't know i it's it's hard to explain it's just something that you sit through and i don't know how much fun i had during it i feel like maybe i uh, i don't need to watch that multiple times i okay. don't feel like i need to watch that that many times just because there's a lot in it so oh, maybe yeah. maybe if i wanted to like pick up on some of the smaller stuff that that's hard to get the first time because it's really lean it goes yep. very quick Mm-hmm. but it's also very uh, yeah it's also a very co- uncomfortable experience so i don't know how how good i feel about going back to something like that well like i had said too is like the runtime is actually kind of perfect uh, i don't know if, if any of you guys don't know who are listening this movie is only 67 minutes so it's really just over an hour that's you know it's a pretty short feature film that's barely a feature really it depends on your definition i guess of a feature but yeah, it's very short, but at the same time, I think it's the perfect runtime for what it throws at you, how vicious and crazy the vision is and yeah. what it's going for, right? It, I think it's the perfect runtime. I think if you went an hour and a half with this, I think you, it would kind of get a little slow towards the end, I think. Yeah. Whereas I think this one, it, it kind of goes, 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 mm-hmm. and just cray, man. It's cray. It, yeah, it, it was crazy. I, that runtime, it did benefit from not being too long because yeah. it was uh, all over the place. I like like the idea that it it does feel like monsters, but kind of like n- normal hu- like humans kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like a like a traditional monster, I guess. In right, way, right. Yeah. It feels like a lot more like they're essentially. They're not even like cyborgs. They're just it's like world building. It's really cool. Yeah, it, they, it, like it, yeah, I, that's that's probably what I liked about it. Because again, mm. it's just so hard to pin down. I think yeah. that the world building is cool. Yeah. If I think about like the structure of the film from start to end, um, I don't know how good, how excited I am about the just overall plot. Right. Right. Okay. Of it, I I, I feel like maybe that was weaker. Okay. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I feel like that's all i can say about it right now it's mm-hmm. better to move off move away from me now see what everybody kind of thinks yeah. and then we'll talk yeah. about it uh so yeah so alex uh is this your favorite film of all time is this your least favorite film of all time or is this your okay favorite film of all time <laughs> it's my favorite film of today oh there you go <laughs> there you go Wow, it threw me for a loop. Yep. When when you told me it was Japanese and it was from 1989, that gave mm-hmm. me an idea. Okay. And the opening shots of the black and white and the handheld camera, mm-hmm. I kept that in mind because usually opening shots help to set the tone of the film. Right. And this kind of did that. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it threw me for a loop within the first five minutes. Yes. And you, you refer to it as a film, mm-hmm. not a movie. And I think there's an important distinction between film and movie Mm -hmm. because I had a lot of fun watching this. I thought it was entertaining. Yeah. I'm not smart enough to to try and figure out what the director was actually trying to say. Yeah. Like I could I could delve into it Mm -hmm. and then I could read afterwards what the director had to say about what the film was really about. And I'd look like a fool. And I'm probably going to do that anyway. Yeah. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. But. Oh, wow. There's Mm -hmm. there's a lot to unpack in that. Yep. 
it's pretty crazy. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, and there's no, there's definitely a lot of things going on in terms of like the messages and even what you can mm-hmm. pull. And I mean, and then there's also, I mean, it's just it's art, right? So there's so many kind of different things. It's one of those movies where there's like different stories you could almost pull from it. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, I'll get into that later, I guess. But uh, but yeah. Yeah, and you're saying it's art. Yeah. Yeah, and and I would go along with that. It's it's no. definitely way off the path of mainstream creative, mm-hmm. and that's what we need every once in a while. And mm-hmm. this definitely went that way. It reminds me of the film that came out the next year in the United States, Begotten. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So to me, I think there's a connection between the two, mm-hmm. even though Begotten had absolutely no dialogue and it told a more primitive story. Sure. Yeah. This was a more modern story. Mm-hmm. I think. This film had to do more with, and I'm probably wrong here. This okay. is where I make a fool of myself. Right. So no, go for it. Go bring for out it. the popcorn. <laughs> so I think uh, 1989, late 80s. Yeah. Um, so I think there's there's commentary on emerging technology yeah. and how that affects people. Right. And how people are are getting used to automation mm-hmm. and they're moving away from the traditionalist viewpoint of doing things yourself yeah and and like when i grew up in the 1980s -hmm. and the 90s using a calculator Mm -hmm. starting to use a calculator Mm -hmm. as opposed to writing it down long form Mm -hmm. so that idea of automation having a machine do it for you Mm -hmm. and then you see that in detroit in the 90s with with the the creation of cars through machines as opposed to people right so automation and technology Mm -hmm. and our dependence on it uh, it reminds me of Existence from oh, 1999, yeah. mm-hmm. where it's human humans biologically merging with technology. Mm-hmm. And of course, you could get into the Matrix on that, on yeah. the psychological aspect. Yeah. And there was another film that reminded me... Oh, The Machinist. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. The Machinist was... And spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't <laughs> seen it, Christian Bale's character gets really, really, really thin uh, because of the guilt he suffers over hit and run right and i think there's there's a little bit of that in here although i could be wrong Mm -hmm. yeah because because, as you said the car did bring all the characters together Mm -hmm. so i think there's there's something in that Mm -hmm. but visually (laughs) it's a treat i would have loved to have been the sound editor on this film because it'd be very stressful but it'd also be awesome Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's such a powerhouse in this film too. Yeah. And I mean, it's I, I highly recommend it if you have that rare opportunity to see it on a big screen with a big sound. I mean, I mean, just yeah, the sound design, the score, like mm-hmm. everything is just incredible. If you get like a really good system and listen to it, it's actually really impressive and ahead of its time, and just really creative. Like, yeah, 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 really out there. And yeah. to be an actor in that film, yeah, I think at first it'd be confusing because when you get sides for something like this, you're like, mm. what the. F- fuck is going on yeah but you go in and you try to do your best Mm -hmm. so if you get that part you might get the whole script or you might just get sides each day yeah and no matter what it's going to be interesting and stressful at the same time Mm -hmm. i would have loved to have been the fly on the wall yeah watching that production because oh man that would have been something else it would just it would have been incredible and i just love the design and stuff like just everything they went through it's like it it seems simple but at the same time it's like complex right they're using simple things but they're making these crazy costumes and he's like morphing and things like with metal and technology and yeah as it goes on it gets crazier and crazier and crazier and um yeah and and you're dead on about the uh, the analogy of like technology kind of taking over people's lives and especially with it being in japan Mm. it has an even bigger precedence and that's i that that's the main one that like people tend to pull out and i think that's definitely what he was going for was that um that kind of idea right that it's like taking over people and consuming them you keep seeing like that being uh, evolved over time as well right so like after that it was uh you know there's like the cyborg element so a more futuristic version of this something that's uh you know a little bit more computer Mm -hmm. and then now nowadays like the the version of what he's going for now which you see a lot actually is just uh uh, either ai like ai and robots human humanoid looking robots right so Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're kind of getting that all the time, right? The idea of of uh, a technology taking over, you know, the human element. Mm-hmm. So I, I think you just see that to varying degrees. So yeah, this one it does feel weird though. The idea, mm-hmm. the whole 
metal idea, like metal taking over idea. I think that's yeah. kind of yes and like no. strange. I, I well, yeah, I guess so. Because like what eighty nine, it was still computers and it was computers, right? but it's the so, whole like kind of idea, like the primitive idea of it of just like you know raw yeah. metal. Well, everybody's freaking out over like over. you know <laughs> computers, the internet, all yeah. that stuff back then. So yeah, yeah that. Uh, you know, it was kind of, oh God, where's this going to go? It's going to take over, you know, Skynet, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, well, whereas, it was a like, little, little early for that. But... It was, but it's like, you know, not far off. No, right? no. And, and yeah. the tech's still there. That's what people were talking about yep. at the time as well. But yeah, I don't know. This, this just feels like, uh, it's still a strange choice because it's like, oh, metal taking over the world. But I kind of get that because like, mm. if you think about the way we construct our cities, the yep. way you know the air yeah you like you were saying cars and all of that it's yeah. like we're everything's you know everything's metal right mm-hmm. it's basically the metal world like i this is a, a random thing it just reminded what you said reminded mm-hmm. me of alex was just like I, I was playing this game um called horizon zero dawn and it came out last year and it's this game where basically it's like like the post post apocalypse when mm-hmm. like er, the world has ended and uh been reborn uh and the idea they they keep referring to the old world our world like we know it now is the metal world uh and everything's metal because the idea that uh it's not nature anymore everything that's left over these metal structures that have decayed and everything it's all part of the the metal world and uh i'm not gonna at all spoil that game for anybody who wants to play it but Mm. it, it turns out that yeah it's like a typical type thing happened to our our uh uh to us that uh like our our time that made us uh, pretty much all metal we were really reliant on that stuff so i kind of get that mentality i so i kind of see where he's coming from and, and that idea it is still strange to me though mm-hmm. but uh yeah i don't know you just reminded me of that when you mentioned it it's like a, a philip k dick type paranoia <laughs> yeah and yeah it's it's interesting to see that play out in a kind of early Vine and five second films and strange videos from the deep web all mashed up mm-hmm. and then shot on grainy film from the late 1980s. Right. I, and I think I understand why he shot it in black and white as opposed to color. Mm. <clears throat> but yeah, because trying to shoot in both, it would confuse the audience way too mm. much yeah. as if they aren't already. Mm. But I think there are, there are things I wanted to see in color. Yeah, it's like yeah. some shots. I wanted to see more of what was in there, but all I see is is just patches of black and mm-hmm. then white. But I think it's it's sometimes not what we see; it's what we don't see. Sure, I know that sounds kind of art house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stupid, but I think there's something to that, and I think that's part of why it was shot in black and white. Well, the other thing is, is I mean, if you want to see you know color, you go see part two. Oh. Uh, Tetsuo Two Body Hammer came out three years later. Um, it's actually a pretty solid trilogy. There's three movies mm. in this. Um, so yeah, Body Hammer came out like three years later, and it's pretty good. Actually, Ebert was even a fan of it too. Mm. And um, and then Bullet was it Tetsuo Three? The Bullet Man came out. I think like 15 years or 17 years later, and Trent Reznor scored it. Nice. Because he was like, yeah, I was a big fan of the first one. Like it influenced me big time. I want to like do this because. Um, Chu Ishikawa, he did this uh, incredible score for the first two movies. The score in the second one's a knockout too, but yeah, Trent Reznor took over in the third one as well. But it's a pretty solid trilogy overall. Again, if you like, you know, Tetsu the Iron Man, you should kind of pursue the other two. I think, although I do think the first one's my favorite, um, just mm-hmm. for the raw, like, you know, crazy and just the visionary style that like you've never really seen. Yeah, and- you know, just. And like almost like the stop motion like type stuff too. Like oh, it's so cool. That was cool. Just the way they used it. Like, you know, like stop motion was obviously a thing for a long time, but even by that point, but just the way they did it, like in terms of like modes of transportation and like mm-hmm. almost like action scenes, like when you don't have a lot of money and things like that, it was just such a neat way to like do that. I thought it was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now we're going over to McTwist. Oh right, yeah. McTwist, what did you think of this uh, this this bad boy? And uh, yeah, was it how is it on the scale of Scarface to <laughs> to face? Oh, to face, was yeah. it Scarface to face? Oh, this, this, there's a lot of the scars the on this here. face. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I I'm still. 
processing when oh, I yeah. just saw. <laughs> Basically, like the only thing I kind of wrote down because <laughs> I only <was> wrote. Fun. <laughs> 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 well, or just what? After I wrote, yeah, pretty much. But I was like, Ugh. Um, but pretty much, I can just sum up this movie. It's just an it's an assault on the senses. Yep. Just mm-hmm. in a nutshell, like pretty much. That's from like sight and sound and everything. Even feeling, I feel like Ugh, this is weird. Yep. Um, yeah, I, it's funny, like, there's thing, the, a lot of things that I could say that I think worked for me at the same time, I also didn't like at the okay. same time. Yeah. So it's one of those love-hate kind of things where mm-hmm. you're like, I like what they're doing, but at the same time, it's really pissing me off oh, okay. of, of how it's showing, because it's not really, it's a movie that does, definitely does not hold your hand. It just kind of, no, it doesn't care. It throws yeah, you in a, yeah. it throws you in a roller coaster and yep. it says, have fun. And yep. then you come yeah. back and you're, like, I feel like I just went through the, that, um, that tunnel in the chocolate factory and Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. You know, I just feel like I just watched an hour version of that. Just okay. like, what the fuck did I just see? Um, the Japanese version. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Smoking <laughs> meth. Yeah. 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 The movie. Um, yeah. No, just over. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say what I liked. Um, sure. The, yeah. The music and the sound design I thought mm-hmm. was definitely the, I think the main draw of the movie because you can, just listen to this without any visuals and totally. still get something out of it. I listen to the score all the time. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's definitely like... A good workout score. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> it, it just has a good energy to it and a good like drive, and mm. it keeps you... It keeps kind of like the energy going. Yep. Almost like a, like a heart pumping. It just like, keeps going. And it yeah. matches the surroundings of it the does. film with the metal yeah. and all it that. It does yeah. feel almost like... Yeah. The sounds almost feel like a like a factory you know yeah very like, much like, yeah so Isn't you feel like you're know? hearing sounds of a factory but in kind of music form yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's it, very rhythmic like yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like it feels like and, you're hitting metal on raw, metal like when you you're kind of have the, yeah. the clanking and yeah. the echoing sound yeah. like yeah it's very yeah, yeah. Very that's why it's so good i think too. no that, like all that stuff was was very interesting and i can definitely say i I haven't seen a movie like this before right um yeah. which you know that's saying a lot it's a very original movie on mm-hmm. that yeah. on that scope um but in terms of like rewatchability or anything like that i don't know this is like a one and done movie yeah i don't think i could you don't ever... want to dive into it again and no explore like i'd be interested to see the sequels just to see where they go with this right. premise um just because it is one of those movies you kind of sit down and you just go like i like I had I couldn't follow anything. I'm okay. just like, what's going on for the most part? Because yeah. just how it's shot. This is where it's like it's the frustrating part okay. of it. Super I'm trying. I'm trying mm-hmm. to f- pinpoint certain things. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Who's who? <laughs> yeah. And dude, you weren't the only one. I think that's we no all. Kidding. That's the funny thing I'm noticing. I think we all felt stupid watching this movie just oh, yeah. because we're like. I just, I'm not getting it all, man. Like, mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Alex is like, I think it was this. And no, then... and he was dead on, though. Like, that's kind of the main uh, Yeah, kind of thing but then yeah. you feel yeah. dumb because yeah. you're like, am I missing something? I don't like, know. Well, you know, it's certainly like, not yeah. holding your hand. Like, like, I, like I, it drags I got... you in the middle of a crowd yeah. and abandons you there. Yeah, yeah, that's like, true, but it abandons me in, like, uh, an acid trip. So I don't much. know what's <laughs> going on. Welcome to Crazy Art House, man. This is what it is. I've seen Art House. Like, this seems even crazy for Art House. Like well, it depends I, on what you're watching. I, I guess mean, so. But yeah. like, I've never. I can say I've never seen a movie like this from Japan. Like from anywhere. Um, I've seen like not Alan, this kind of crazy. No, not in terms of like how it's put together and execution, yeah. but in yeah. terms of like the whole theme of like I kind of got the theme with like being assimilated through machinery and all that, yeah, and yeah, how yeah. we're becoming more and more dependent and almost becoming like machines. Right. Um, yeah. like we've seen this in Japan a lot. Like the mm. one movie that I kept thinking of while watching this was Akira. Sure. Um, yeah, yep. makes a lot of sense. And it's just like this. Just seems to be a big Here's thing in nowhere Japan. Nowhere on the level of crazy. Is no, 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 no. But <laughs> in terms of like just the, an FYI, but, but the new yeah. mission of um, or this. yeah, but yeah, well, when, Akira. well, when your movie makes Akira Tatsuo. look sane, like that, yeah, Akira's yeah. yeah. still pretty crazy. Like it's got moments. Yeah, and, for sure. and I don't know. Like, like to me, like there's like I remember like I I broke my kind of like notes into like plot, acting, directing, all that shit, and mm-hmm. plot. I just wrote what, what plot. <laughs> 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 that's what, no, that's what I was kind of <laughs> echoing too, and I was, yeah. or, well, ah. I was talking because I just didn't feel like, yeah, there wasn't much for. But that, the but plot. I don't, a lot, but there is a plot. a plot. I think it's, that's a little it's, unfair. It's not so much a plot. It's just, no, there's it's, a plot. It's, a, it's, it's more is. story. Yeah. Yeah. It's just sort of just. It's not like 
a twist where you try, you're not engaged with the story. You're engaged with the execution. Yeah, it's um, it's, a, it's more of a feeling than it is. Yeah, a yeah story. it's an experience. This is pure yeah, emotion. Like, it, it, the, yeah. there's times where you feel uncomfortable. There's times where you feel like times where you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> well, really uncomfortable. There's I times say where... that eighty percent of the runtime. Yeah. Yeah. comfortable. I don't know. Like for me, the movie never bugged me in that way. Like I wasn't like yeah. grossed out you or disturbed. No, not once. Sure. Um, I was just more like, okay, okay. Well, hold on. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it just depends on, on what you're, you're bothered you're by, though, to be fair. You're telling me that opening didn't, like, at all... No. Because, like, that was pretty... I yeah. was more like, I was like, okay. this. Yeah. Is, I'm like, okay. I'm like... And then, when I, like, I joked with seeing the Meg. I was like, well, what did you expect was going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Like, like I never was never disturbed. I was just yeah. like, what are you going to do? Where are you going with this? I mean, I think that varies, like I was saying just now, like, with you, who you are and what yeah. makes you tick, right? Because, yeah, I mean, that's you, but obviously it affected you a yeah. lot more... Yeah, it just, there's certain people yeah. like certain things. It's like you with the cannibalism I thing, mean, Jack. A little it's bit, like, yeah. it nothing me. for me, but for you, it's a whole nother. Yeah, it just yeah, it right? just it bugs me. But the, the main thing also, like I said, the love hate thing is that I thought mm-hmm. that the the graininess and the black and whiteness kind of really helped with yep. like the special effects and the overall um, pacing of the movie. But at the same time, it did make things a lot harder to see, mm-hmm. especially when it's just going all over the place. You like gotta a, watch it a second oh, time. Yeah. It's but I don't, benefits it's so from yeah, but I don't, but I don't want to watch it a second time. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, man. Um, because I felt like I got enough out of it after after kind of like, okay, with the car and seeing all kind of stitched together yeah. to sort of make some sort of sense. I'm like, okay, I, I sort of see what they're going with, but at the same time, it's like you know, like if the movie's not going to bother telling me what's going on or at least give me some something to hang on to, then mm-hmm. I'm not going to reach out. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to just take it at face value. If, and yeah. If it's moving so fast, you kind of have to, you can't absorb it all. Just and that's just where it so becomes much. instinctual um, reactions to it. Like, what yeah. are you yeah. feeling instinct? And uh, yeah. for the most part, it's just like, for me, it was just like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just something about it. It reminds me, I think, yeah, I, it didn't disturb you in any way, but like looking at like the metal, it just reminded me of like a fungus. Yeah, it reminds yeah. me of like the the crazy uh, like zombie monsters from The Last of Us or something. Oh yeah, that's actually where a good it's just idea. like these like yeah. f- shit growing out of them, out of their heads, and out of and it looks all fungusy almost, but it replaced like a fungus with like wires Wire, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, but it looks eerily similar, and it's it is a gross ass look, man. Oh it yeah, looks and, and and to me it works better in black and white because if it was in color, I think it would have looked a lot more fake. Yeah, sure, um, for sure. I think like the overexposed were like the the whites were really really high, and so it was yeah. like almost like washed out at times, mm-hmm. which I think worked with the metallic feel of it. Yeah, it's more raw. Yeah, right? it looks more yeah. grittier. It looks more, you know, and the thing about black and white looks more like a dream. You know, it yep. doesn't feel real, and that's I think you're what... telling me exactly. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Like overall, like I thought it was. I'm glad at least I got I got to see it once, but yeah. I don't know. I would I wouldn't see it again. Okay. <laughs> um, I so. think you should. I think you should give it some time. Give it a couple years. Come back to it. Because I, honestly, I think like multiple times when I've watched, I've picked up different. I don't know. Things it's been and... a couple years for me. Well, but hold since, on. But you didn't see I... the whole movie. You this saw true. chunks. Yeah. But you didn't see the whole thing in cohesive order. I don't know. I'm just gonna say I have no interest in seeing it again. Okay. Like pretty much, I yeah, I pretty much have no interest in seeing it again, and I have. I just very... think it's exciting. I think the vision's really creative. I think it's so out there and different from anything you get. And I just, I don't know, personally, I just think like you know, it should be kind of on the level of like say like some of Lynch's films and like Cronenberg. Yeah, because yeah, that's really definitely. what they compare. They compare. They they kind of say it's like Eraserhead meets like The Terminator meets. Yeah. Like they yeah. just combine all their movies and then like Cron- some Cronenberg body horror film and you throw yeah. it all together yeah. and it's this movie, but it's I not don't, too. I, it's I don't disagree so with what like why you like it and all that. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just for for. And, it, actually watching this, I'm like, I kind of get Zach a little more now. Hmm. <laughs> We're again, gonna reenact this in Japan, again, Jack. Zach, Zach wasn't a. You're not a, a Lynch fan, I, or well, you weren't. Well, I mean, there's, there's, like, there's a big, there's yeah. a whole hold up. I mean, there's, there's been some changes. There's been evolution, like this film. Yeah, but did which where, movies of his that you saw that you weren't? A okay, fan of, so right? I think, I think this is going a he little ne- off. He track. needs to rewatch. Not a entirely, because like this is kind of. He knows Lynchian, a little. Right? He knows a little more of what I'm talking about. So yeah. basically, yeah. So with Lynch, I remember watching. I think it was fuck. What was it again? Lost Highway. I watched mm-hmm. that one. Wasn't into it when I first saw it. I was like, what the hell's going on? Blah, blah, blah. 
but that was years ago and i was like what the hell is this i don't like it this is just kind of being random for being random right I, but at the same time to be fair i also haven't watched a lot of art house stuff and then i think it wasn't until like twin peaks where things started to really click and that one is is it's crazy but it's not as crazy i think it's his most kinda, accessible i think i would well no he's got more accessible stuff than that like what the short story straight story he's the got elephant that one. man's a lot more i've heard the elephant too. man yeah. is i haven't seen that yet actually um but that one is one too so he's got some straightforward films um but uh yeah but twin peaks kind of got me into it and then i started watching his other stuff and again and it's like you know what like it's it's starting to click right because it yeah. does like the more you watch art house you know and things like that the more like even like tits of the iron man and like you know anything by was it alejandro drakowski yeah. i believe is his yeah. name um he did like el topo and the holy mountain stuff like that like those films like the really like crazy art house movies that a lot of people would see at face value and go eh you know if you're into that and you watch a lot of that stuff some things start to click with that and become some of your favorites potentially yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes it's just a scene that you're watching like you're taking it in just yes. as it is but you see a scene all of a sudden that doesn't make sense why it's because yeah. when you do a film you have to structure it a certain way depending on the point of view you're shooting it from and if something doesn't make sense at first that might lead you on a different path as to well why is this here yeah. there's got to be a reason for it Maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's that. Oh, no, exactly. And those often you, you know, repeat views and then you go, aha, you figure that out. Exactly. And it's fun, right? Exactly. And then it becomes this whole, you know, rewarding experience, right? Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Well, the best movies do that. Yeah. Just like, yeah. so, yeah. So there you go. So <laughs> a couple of years, come back to this. I just, I don't know, because uh, all those other, I like, I've seen Holy Mountain. I felt differently. You saw Holy Mountain? Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, I felt differently about that movie than I do about this movie. Uh, In a good or bad way? I'm curious. Because I didn't know this. Like, did I prefer Holy Mountain? Is that what you're asking? Well, that, but also kind of like, what did you like, you know, differently from this movie? I I mean, they are very different. I'll give you that. You know, there's an intensity to this film that that one doesn't have, right? The rush and everything, but... It is also like it's I, very I was just house, more so. engaged with it, I okay. guess, uh, with Holy Mountain than I was with uh, with this. I think it's the speed of this, to be honest. It is intense. It's it's the speed. It of never this stops that just, because yeah. it has all those elements of like because something like if you're watching Art House, it's I find mm. that it's good to sit on something to yeah. have those moments and to sit on them because you're like your brain's just firing trying to figure out what the fuck is going on, what is happening. Yeah, because yeah, like we've all kind of said like. You feel lost at points in this movie. But yeah. I feel like before you have a chance to... You have not even like a couple seconds to sit on anything before yeah. something else happens. I love so that. So it feels like constant questions for a full 67-minute run. Yeah, you got to sit on it at the end of the credits. Yeah, which is which impossibly is hard to do because you're like, is so much happened, I don't know. And yeah. then you have to rewatch it, but you're like, but I don't want to. So like, <laughs> there's no winning in this one. I don't, but maybe just, maybe maybe you watch it again. Yeah, like even like, you Lynch's know stuff. I'm like, okay, at least I can sit on stuff, kind of be confused hmm. in the moment, looking at yeah. it like what, and then go okay, and then you'll start to come around during the movie. Sure. Right? Yeah. But then with this, like, I don't know, it just flies. Yes, it does. Yeah. Flies yeah. and just leaves like a wreckage in your brain. As and it's awesome as, again, and that wake. represents the movie, like what's going on. I think. I think that's. It's awesome and it's different and I love how it doesn't let you breathe. It's just totally boom, 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 boom. I, I think it's really cool. I think like, it depends what some, you want to get from your movies, man. I mean, like, fair enough, but it's like, yeah, I just, I love those. I mean, and they don't come around often. There's not a lot of movies like that, but uh, it's just really cool when you have a movie that's just nonstop intense and, but it's got that, like I said, that art side to it and it just got so many things to unpack and I just, and the vision and everything, I just love movie we haven't gotten to rylan yet yeah i want to hear what rylan talking has a long to say. time and yeah rylan i was curious about yeah. i was telling jack rylan's not gonna like this movie <laughs> <laughs> rylan ain't I'm gonna not like this the funny thing was when i was, was watching this i was thinking the same thing i'm like my wife would hate this movie yeah I, oh, I'm, I was thinking of like who the hell else will i show it this movie too besides your who's mom. sitting in this room your mom no <laughs> <laughs> come on show your family show show your cousins that's funny my mom that's couldn't even watch detroit picture. without feeling upset like, like listen <laughs> listen listen fam we're gonna sit down and we're gonna it's only gonna be an hour and seven minutes okay that ain't a lot of time out of your day i mean you know these movies nowadays two and a half hours you i don't know. think they invite me over anymore let's go <laughs> tetsu the iron man he's here he's you know it's iron man right i mean he's got iron man in yeah. there i think it's one of the most yeah. inaccessible 
art house movies that you can watch. So Rylan, so I want to know. I think, what my, do you think? My, my mom would get more out of Only God Forgives than this. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I yeah. got more out of Only God I Forgives. I did too. Actually. But anyway, yeah, Rylan, you yeah, gotta anyways. tell me. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I'm not really sure whether I just sat through an hour long tool music video <laughs> or, or like the penultimate episode of some mecha anime I've never heard of. Yeah. Totally. So, like, either way, I'm not really sure what I just watched <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day. Um, I mean, I kind of agree with everybody else on the positives. Like, mm. the, 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 the scores was really cool. It just kind of had this, this like, uh, weird, like, dissonant, like, atonal sound that just kind of kept you, like, d- kind of disconnected, but also... But uh, also invested at the same time, like it, it just at unease. Like, what is mm-hmm. what what is going on? What's going to happen? It it fit really well with the imagery, the, the the shaky camera and the the rapid cuts. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I also agree that the that the like the rapid cuts and the close ups kind of made things indiscernible. It's mm-hmm. hard to know what you're looking at at times, and there's. Uh, I, we haven't really talked about the minimal use of dialogue in this movie. Right, it's yeah. mostly uh, yeah. it, it, it it's mostly just kind of nonverbal yelling and yeah. grunting and thrashing and associated sound effects from there. So I mean, I guess the the, the screenwriter had a pretty easy go of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the most interesting dialogue was like at the end. Well, from a dialogue point of view, I mean, I mean, obviously, like <laughs> when he was writing the world and stuff, but like, but yeah, in terms of dialogue, oh yeah, there's like a few lines. And at the end, it yeah. feels like almost like an explanation. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. We gotta, right. we gotta no, give the audience like... something to hang on to. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, like it's it, it has a feeling of like this kind of just like raw primal chaos, but with this kind of weird underlying theme of. Uh, rising uh, industry and technology and society mm. as well. Um, so, I mean, I kind of agree that that, that, I mean, that was like the main message that I could have probably gotten out of it too. Um, I mean, he could have been trying to say something else or that and other things as well. Mm. I mean, it's, uh, it's very difficult to tell. It certainly does not spell it out for you, which nope. I mean, I appreciate uh, anything that, that 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 spoon feeds you isn't good either. But I mean, I'm 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 pretty uh, perplexed by this one. I have to say, <laughs> it does spell out game over at the end, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should have that Mario sound effect. Perfect. I mean, I mean, another big thing that people kind of unpacked from this, which which I could totally see, and it really fits with this movie too, is that this is a movie about a man struggling with his inner homosexuality. Which is really interesting because I actually you got, did, you got a little bit of yeah. that. Yeah. I did actually get a little that bit of that, be. particularly near the end. Like, yeah. says, yeah. like we got our do love. The, will, yeah, yeah, our love. I'm like, okay, this might be a slight metaphor for you know. Yeah, it's like that seemed a little bit at a left field, unless you consider. If you go back though, when yeah. you kind of look at it, he's with his wife and stuff like that. Yeah, all that the stuff relationship going on. was was kind really of going strange. weird. Yeah, yeah. No, I have sense. a feeling like each of them was supposed to represent something. Yeah. yeah, so well, there's that too. There's a lot of also like very like sexually suggestive imagery as yeah. well. Not just with the twist, you know, drill dick. There's also, <laughs> you know, he took the highlight. That, yeah, the, or he like he took like a large like tube up his ass and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, there's a there's yeah, I can I can definitely see where that's coming. Yeah, from. yeah, and it's 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 really interesting. I can see that, but I don't think it's like that. <laughs> Like effective, I don't, I don't mm. know if that's what he's going for. Like, plus, I, I, I get plus it, it, overblown it. sexual imagery in movies is usually an allegory for the government fucking you somehow. Like a Serbian, Serbian film, film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, does, it does look like uh, bow, 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 bow. something is literally <laughs> fucking you in the ass. So, like, speaking of Serbian film, yeah, sure. the score. There you go. Start with the little one. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, the ending. The oh. ending. I like Serbian film. I go home. You know? <laughs> yeah, me and myself and Alex we see we appreciate extreme cinema. See, I, I Alex and see, I see I don't know. I would I would rather watch Tetsu over a Serbian film again. Well, I mean I would yeah, too. I That's would. one of my favorite movies. Yeah, but... Serbian film. Oh god. But I like Serbian Why film. We... I appreciate what it did. It was out of the box. But anyways, this that's a different movie. It has nothing to do with Serbian. Yeah, it's a different film. film. No. <laughs> another, yeah. another time I'll bring that I don't know. in for I everybody. Just, I didn't no. find that I didn't find that theme to be that effective if uh, I don't know. I just don't think it's that there's much to it. 
Uh, the homosexuality yeah yeah yeah. sure like if you're just sprinkling some of that in but it feels like i mean like if that's actually what he was intending i've been like a sub idea kind of yeah i don't i don't think that's the main thing if it is if it is sprinkled on and superficial and that you know when it feels superficial yeah because that's what when you guys mentioned it i thought back to the whole movie i'm like okay we're in the movie you know where there are hints of it i always think of that right i'll watch a movie and then if i find something out later yeah i'll look at the complete context of the movie in my mind kind of replay it yeah and see hey did they you know foreshadow this were there cool little you know was this kind of sprinkled in and i never noticed it um for this no it feels very superficial if that mm. like that theme specifically um like the me- the only that's why when i was listening to it uh i was curious what you were going to say alex about uh, what you thought the movie was about because I was like, I don't fucking... Like, I didn't... Yeah. I was constantly trying to figure it out. When you yeah. mentioned that, I'm like, okay, but it still felt superficial. I'm like, yeah, that makes the most sense, what you said. Yeah. But it still doesn't feel like that. Well, that's the big one. Oh, no, I, I think it makes a lot of sense, the whole, like, technology and all that, but it's... Sure. No, I, I think it makes a lot of sense if you look at it, and I think metal makes a lot of sense. I think the fact metal, that a lot of no, tech me- is made around I'm, I'm not up, around upset that. about the whole metal angle. I kind of turned around on that. I was, like, listening yeah. to what Alex was saying, and I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. That's fine. I just think, like, it's not that it's not that effective i guess oh okay like that's well, the kind of like, way i'm looking at it is that okay, i, I but... think like like i mentioned horizon zero dawn you want to look at something like about technology and but that's humanity. like kind of laying it out for you right that's going oh yeah this is what it is and you know this film isn't about it, that this no film is yeah about, it's, it's definitely telling us we're representing versus, like, we're just... representing this idea you know yeah. while this other stuff's going on but it's not like you guys have said uh, i don't know i think the biggest i don't know the biggest thing i keep going to is like i get what the, i kind of see certain ideas of what the movie's trying to tell yeah. i can sort of get an idea of what they're trying to say i just don't know what the point is okay of like what's the what's the real point the of thing, everything right? and i really don't know yeah okay. um like i, I kind of like there's all these we've all, we've all had kind of our own interpretation of the movie and maybe that is the point you, you're supposed to just there's no point you're supposed to just take what you're take there's out a of bit of that i think the homosexuality one is a bit of that i think that's yeah, somebody yeah. who went you know there's a few things here but yeah yeah, yeah. But, 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 like, but the technology one i think was definitely a thing he intended on i think that oh it's it's, shows it's, it's everywhere yeah. it's the one thing that is in your face yes. like okay mach- machines and humans yeah. yes. like M- melding yeah pretty much it's in the title too yeah um but yeah no that's sort of what i kept going to is like i, th- I think we, all of us are kind of having a struggle what was the actual point of this mm. of the story what was the director really trying to say i don't mm. think any of us really got that yeah. maybe he's um, implying that with our reliance on technology we might might as well be one creature. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like it'll turn the whole world into like the idea that this monster will turn this whole world into, into metal and rust and, yeah. and will just disappear kind of thing and we'll uh, you know that's that'll be what's left. Yeah. But again, like I machines taking y- over you guys, humans. You guys don't know, but I felt like I've just played something that did that message more effectively. Uh, mm. So like I can't cuz again I can't talk about it because yeah, it's yeah. like a you recent thing, it. and I don't want to ruin like a you know like a tens of hours yeah. of game for people mm-hmm. who are who haven't played it, even though it's a movie podcast. Mm-hmm. But like that story it was telling is very similar, like it, definitely a lot broader, uh, a lot less, a uh, lot a broader in scope. This is definitely a lot more narrow. Uh, but I, I feel like they're hitting a lot of the same points about specifically metal. Like there's companies called mm-hmm. Metallurgic and stuff like that, and. Like it, it's hitting these same themes, but it was just so much more effective. Mm. I thought it was so much more engaging and interesting, and it was making similar. Uh, it was making it, it was similar themes, a lot of similar themes. So, like after having played that for a ridiculous amount of time and getting immersed in that, and then watching this and just having this like blow past me in mm-hmm. sixty-seven minutes and going, really, that's it? That's mm-hmm. what it's about? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's just okay. That that's all I can say about it is just shrug my shoulders and go, okay, mm-hmm. why not? Yeah, that's. Mm-hmm. I had the same feeling. Why not? And uh, another thing that I uh, brought to mind in terms of like I've seen the sort of like you know humans and machinery sort of blending is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I almost wonder if um, anyone from Star Trek. Uh, took the took this movie as a slight inspiration for like the borg or anything like that. oh yeah mm-hmm. um which because that that the whole like metal being like a virus or a fungus is, right. is kind of like the borg in general a little bit yeah um so that's kind of interesting but again going off what andrew was saying like we've seen this theme mm-hmm. told 
well and told more effectively. But again, it's sort of what I was saying. I don't know if that's, yeah, that's sort of that surface value. That's what we see from the film. But I don't mm. know if that's exactly the main message. Again, mm. struggling with what was the point of the movie. Because yeah. yeah. we see all these questions, all these ideas mm. scattered everywhere. And ultimately I think that's the draw of the movie though. I, I know right? well it that's is it problem. is very much an experience too yeah that, that is a big part the draw. of it. the draw yeah. is definitely the imagery and the yes the absolutely. but i'm saying that's going on too it's got kind of yeah. both going on yeah it's when you're trying yeah. to look deeper into it yeah. it's just where we're, we're like okay. then it feels a little uh shallow exactly yeah i that, feel like it feels very interesting and and there's a lot of depth to the visuals and the sound mm-hmm. but then you start to go any uh, try to go any deeper in terms of what the film's about themes things like that it feels uh shallow feels like you're getting a hose up the butt yeah, yeah like yeah. I, I i don't want to spend too <laughs> much of my time thinking what did he mean by shoving that that hose that metal hose or whatever because up the butt. he because so, because he's i don't know that dudes. i want to waste my he's into he's into that. dudes that's what it is that's the sure yeah there you sure. go sure that great yeah. good great theme there <laughs> glad we established Great. that Great, anal one. equals gay okay yeah. I, I that's a good message yeah. thanks there you go like there you go fuck dude <laughs> <laughs> just see that's a straightforward message that you can get behind yeah and you can you show yeah. your family yeah. and you can get say me. this get guy behind it yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. Get, you can get i mean that was a joke at the same caliber so <laughs> as that message so i can't be mad about that I can't be mad about that. Unless it came from Zach. Can you get behind it? <laughs> yeah, see, now I don't like it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm on, I'm on uh, Jack's the wavelength, wavelength here. So, yeah. yeah. For, for once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for once, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'll give the I'll give this movie uh, some props. It had no dumb cops in it. It had no cops yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. It had no cops oh, at all. You must love this movie. So on, on, on like police check, it's... Uh, it's it passed it's gotten, the test? Yeah, it's got no all cops right. at all. That's a good solution. But at Just the same don't time, write any. But at the same, but at the same time, though, Andrew, wouldn't you think there would be a cop presence if they were making all that destruction? No, in fuck. Town? If I were a cop and getting paid, and I saw like this metal monster, I'd be like, I don't get paid nearly enough <laughs> to to deal with this. But you always Bye-bye. got that hero. You got that hero, that hero cop. But they've seen Akira, man. They know what's happening. Like, nope, you see a yeah, giant. Yeah, I guess they would have. Yeah, a giant a simulated metal creature. Run the fuck away. Yeah, they were warned a year before. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Also, yeah, like, uh, yeah. This movie's shot in a way where it feels like everything's happening in their own world. Like, I wouldn't even be surprised if this was just happening in one of the characters' heads or something. Oh, yeah. Just oh, well, they, they pull so a 2000s fucking, twist, an early 2000s. Yeah. Like, it was all in his head. Yeah. Like, it, sure, and I, it wouldn't be a stretch because it feels like a like a dream. So, mm-hmm. uh, because more, it's just more like so a nightmare. <laughs> what did you yeah, guys think? Sorry, yeah, nightmare. What did you guys think of them jazz bits? On the score, yeah, that was good. The jazz the again. Jazz. I said everything about the score. Yeah, was no, good. the music is yeah. fine. So anytime yeah. the like, it was, I was on board. Yeah, so it was it, all the it, changes. Yeah, no it wasn't like an Injustice for All where it stood out. Yeah, yeah, where it's like it actually, awful, I actually yeah. felt like it was like okay, now the we're now it's kind of like a different beat. It almost changes the tone. It almost kind of yeah. puts you on your toes a little bit because you're like. Oh, now all of a sudden we're a little nicer, but then again, we've seen what this movie has already done to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're already n- it's not like a trusting it. Moment yeah. of levity, like a tiny break before. A little bit, yeah, but it's you're like or- a stop sign on the way to the end. You know, yeah. yeah but, but you, you as the viewer yeah. is not is refusing to be lulled into the false. Yeah, oh, yeah. And they <laughs> don't let you. They don't let you sit in it for very long either. No. So hmm. they kind of just slap the stop sign on your face as you're waiting. They're like, "Hey, just <laughs> yeah. wait. Bye. Here you go." <laughs> 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 pretty much that's this fucking movie but man. i mean hey it could be a dream too because i mean there could be a theory that when the car hits the metal fetishist and it says new world on front of the car um that it could be yeah it could be this this whole thing could be start of a dream i, I feel like if you want to just get the experience of this movie i could just take i could take a flashlight and flat that would put the flat the fast flash on yeah on a flashlight well, setting flash yeah. it in your eyes and then bang two pots together for a while no, no, eventually no, 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 two you'll pots. get the same feeling ah, on the inside yeah. Yeah. <laughs> while i'm like shoving like a, a, a tube of your ass no a, a slinky in your face. <laughs> i'm just going slinky <laughs> so yeah so there you go you want to feel <laughs> You want a similar feeling? There you go. How did it make you feel? Yeah, Zach, I have a, I have a question for sure, you. Sure. Yeah. How the hell is this in your top 100 favorite movies? How is where? It? No, hold on. Another question. Where in your top number 100 seventy? Is it? 
70. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Scarface is ahead of it by two, I will say. Oh, yeah, Andrew. That's so, a good question. I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, so what's your scale? What's your scale of uh, Scarface? I, I oh. preferred Scarface over this, I Really? Think. Thank you. No. you, you can't <laughs> shake your hand, Jack. I'm sorry, bud. Are you, are you being sincere about that? Because I thought you Am didn't I sincere? like Scarface. I thought Scarface was uh, overrated. Yeah, uh, you didn't like it. I didn't say like I straight up didn't like oh, it. Oh, like, I thought you did. I I, I was like, oh, it's okay. Uh, you know, that was kind of my But he'll see it over reaction. this, so I'll take but it. But I'd rewatch Scarface. Like, I'm, I'm willing to, to turn around on it, maybe. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm very much willing. I'm in no way willing to to change my opinion on this movie. Okay. I know that watching it again, like, sometimes you just know. Watching it again, you'll see more, I'm mm-hmm. sure, because mm-hmm. that's natural. I'll kind yep. of ignore stuff I already saw and pick up on other things I missed. But at the same time, uh, I know I won't might get any remotely any more enjoyment out of it. Mm-hmm. I know that. Like I'm I would positive. have a slightly better idea of what I just watched, but I'm not sure why. Still. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I'll still be sitting in the same feeling at the end of it, and and it's, it's a good feeling. It's nah. you're hooked on a feeling, and it feels nice. I yeah, Scarface is a better. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> I can agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, no shit. It's your favorite movie. Uh... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, well, I think I already explained myself going back to what you were saying of how it's like one of my, you know, top 100 movies or whatever. Yeah. What? What? Okay. When yeah. was the first time you actually saw this movie? Oh. And also just, just why? <laughs> it was, a, I mean, it was a while ago because I've seen this a few times. Like I've seen this quite a few times because that's the good thing about this movie is the time, you know, the runtime is so short that honestly, and it's a crazy experience. It gives you a rush. I think that's the only way you can in get someone to rewatch. It's like, well, it's not that long. It really isn't. It's, like, it's, it's, a, it's a really short movie. It's yeah. the shortest movie, you know, in my top 100. If it and... was three hours, I don't think you'd be breathing anymore. Zach. Well, that's it. Well, if it was an hour and a half, I think it would like, be like, too Like, yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, how did you discover this? Because, like, did you just take some speed, go to a block <laughs> Blockbuster video, <laughs> and then the guy saw you, and he was like, "Fuck, you need this. Yeah, like, you need this. this. You watch this now. Wear yourself out." Um, like, shit. Dude. I mean, the I mean, I watched it years ago, but it was. I mean, it wasn't a blockbuster rental. I don't think or something. I think I just watched it. I don't know somehow, but I saw it and. uh Probably in the shittiest of conditions, which is kind of great actually for this movie. You know, if you think about it, and. Yeah, I think I was just struck by. I mean, I've, in the beginning, I think you get hit by like the experience, right? You get hit by the holy shit! Like this is you're taking everything in at face value at first, and just it's just like nothing you've ever seen, right? And it's uh, it's almost like a whiplash, and you know you don't know quite what to do with it, but you there are elements that I grabbed onto anyways, like the score and the visuals. I mean, you can't even deny that, and just different things about it that it was like fuck, I've never quite seen anything, and then when I saw it again. I don't know if I was showing somebody. No, probably not. Because I think the first time I showed anybody this movie was when John was over, actually. Um, Mm -hmm. And when you decided to pass out, you were like, fuck it! No, man, I was just so tired. and It's like, a lot to deal with Seeing if you're that tired. opening sequence, I'm just like, no, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> I'm, honestly, it's, I, I, you need to be in a mood to see this movie. John, and I don't know if they're, you know what, after seeing it just now, I don't think there, I don't know that there is a right mood for this movie. I disagree. I, I like it. I, I think if you're looking for something really exciting that's unlike anything you've ever seen before that's really visionary i think this is great like uh, i think that you could just get the the sound like the score Mm -hmm. throw that on Mm -hmm. like put it on like throw some earphones on some headphones on yeah just listen to that and you'll get the best possible experience from this movie. I, I disagree with I that. Feel you like... can check out some of the scenes. You can you can play it over sure. some of the scenes with stop motion and pros- the yeah, prosthetic. Yeah, yeah you well. know, there's that. But I feel yeah. like in order to do that, you have to like watch the whole movie, <laughs> which yeah. is like it I don't works know, with man. the whole movie. I, the part I liked best, I don't need to watch it to to experience that. So, mm. uh, I mean, um, the score you can listen to on its own, but I just think it works so well with the movie. I mean, it's it almost a part of it, really. It fits, it but I feel like I don't know. It's just like I don't want to watch the movie again to have to 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 experience that sync of visual, like some of the cool visuals. Yeah, with the sound. So screw it. I just won't even. I just I'm just surprised that you're not more arrested, like with the um 
with the over like the crazy visuals and stuff. I do. I liked it a lot. That. Like it rem- that stop motion stuff was the coolest stuff. Yeah. Like I I really liked that. Like it reminded me of like it's the reason why I think uh like Doctor Strange was one of the most visually interesting Marvel movies because it had kind of stuff like that, like the apple on the table. Like so, some of the stuff that I saw in this movie remind mm-hmm. me reminded me of stuff like the apple on the table mm-hmm. and some of the time stuff that they did in that Doctor Strange movie, mm-hmm. where like the cups were just going like in and out. Yeah, the, yeah. The um, some of the stuff was like growing and coming back and like going back and mm-hmm. back and forth or like quickly growing. Like it was like a time lapse almost. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was super cool mm-hmm. uh, as a, as like a visual trick. And that I loved a lot. Mm-hmm. But again, that is mixed in with like some of the stuff where it's like, what is happening? You know, like is some of the more confusing stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Like you, you can't get one without the other. Yeah. So, no, no, that's true. It is all one package, but I just yeah. Think it's so its so own so here's the thing, kind of thing. To yeah, so I did like that stuff. Yeah, it's not like I didn't. But the reason why I'm I'm against the idea of having to like rewatch it is just because I can't, I have to watch it all together and I don't Mm -hmm. know that I want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I could just see, like if I could make my own cut of that movie, Mm. sure. Maybe, but it would be even shorter. (laughs) It would be a a a decent, uh, a decent uh, bit shorter. So like, I don't know, man, like, are you going to rush it to see that sequel lander? That's the the thing I was, I, I was saying earlier is like, I have pretty much no desire to see it again uh, this one again or any desire to see the other two but you get to see it in color man you get to see it in color now get to see a new story what i don't story? know I, there's other things oh, there I'd is rather a story watch. there is a story <laughs> there are other things i'd rather watch like even uh like were, were we talking about even some of the sequels to some of the other movies we were we watched on here that we had mentioned i think like even the psycho ones, honestly, mm-hmm. like I'd watch that before I watch the well, sequels I mean, to sequel this. Too, but it's also more straightforward too. Yeah. I mean, this is a, just a whole different movie entirely. And that's, I mean, that's why it was a risk, but I definitely wanted to, to bring it in. But moving on to Alex. Cause, cause Andrew's a wimp. Uh, what did you think of this movie? Every we... movie. Sorry, you were going to say. Sorry, that? I was about to say. We already know what he thinks. Yeah, like, yeah, I thought he mentioned but that. But I mean, already. just final kind of statement. Oh, we're doing final? You. Can I Can I uh, oh, finish yeah, one I... thing then? Oh, I didn't done. know we were summing up. We were, so we were kind of still going off of up, why you were still, yeah. why did you like this movie? Yeah. To begin with? Oh, well, well, if you want to come back to that, I mean, it's, it's just kind of everything. I mean, really, I was arrested by, you know, the fucking visuals, the score, the sound design you know, the ideas that they had in it. And like I said, the second time that kind of made it all, you know, um, a little more cohesive and it made a lot more sense. And yeah, it was just like, you've never seen anything like this ever. And that just kind of blew me away. Like something really visionary like that on, on like a low budget. I don't know what the budget was, but it wasn't a lot. I know that. And you can tell because of like different techniques they did. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just thought it was really amazing. Again, I just never seen anything like it. Um, and it just reminds me of like films like Evil Dead and stuff like that, where again they take a low budget but they do something crazy that's like never really been done, and they make this like really unique movie that just blows you out of the water. Um, and I just thought this movie, combined with like the crazy pace and stuff like that, how it never lets you breathe. And I like how you know those movies only come by every once in a while, and it's really cool that that one is that, but it also has again the visual flares, the ideas behind it the the score which is really fucking good um yeah it's just it's a whole package for me really like for me i don't really have any negatives and i don't have a problem getting lost in a movie either and especially since it's art house you're going to i think um but obviously the more you dive into it the more you're willing to give yourself up to it i think the more um it works for you and i think obviously the repeat viewings of this movie have kind of done that um and yeah it's just overall it's, it's just such a unique masterpiece for me personally and i know i mean obviously other people really like it too but obviously it's not everybody's cup of tea which is naturally to be expected with mm-hmm. a movie like this right. yeah. yeah well yeah i i, I guess yeah it's, it's just one of those things where for for me art house mm-hmm. if i'm gonna get lost and i i also enjoy getting lost in a movie and just kind of experiencing it rather mm-hmm. than needing to understand everything mm-hmm. um but like I think it's just the kind what I'm getting lost in. This mm. is getting lost in an uncomfortable, uh, not like a like a disturbing feeling, mm-hmm. pretty much. And uh, you know that's not 
that's not a pleasant experience usually. Okay. Uh, and it can be, it's okay to be unco- to be lost in something uncomfortable, but I think that takes, this takes it a step further than that. It's not uncomfortable. It's, it's crossing the line. It's crossing that line into like just undesirable, like in a way where it's, it's so, it's kind of disturbing and in a way that you just don't really want to be lo- like having that feeling for even 67 minutes it's just because like it's not a great feeling it turns you off and it, it turns mm-hmm. you off of it yeah exactly uh like if whether this movie is underrated or not i mm. i would like underrated by me sure mm. because i'm well, i get because you know maybe i just don't get it as much but mm. uh like i'm not at all surprised that you know pretty much nobody would have seen this well let me retune that i mean because obviously this film is never going to be huge right i mean this film is never going to be but i think at the same time i think it should be kind of in that playing field of those other art house films that like again like i said earlier like cronenberg or lynch had put out that you know are well regarded i just think they're all right i think that their movies are just better in my opinion though what have you seen by lynch lynch like mulholland drive i liked a lot and um, there's there's a few others I'm trying to remember the names. Like if you name some off, I could. Blue I've, Velvet is the other. Blue really Velvet's big one. the other one. Yes, yeah, so I like Blue Velvet a lot. Like yeah, yeah so I, I you know I've seen a, like at least three or, or four of his Eraser movies. Eraserhead. No, I haven't seen Eraserhead. This one too. Um, I haven't seen Eraserhead. Well, Dune, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but you know I, I do like Lynch's stuff more. Okay. Um, and Cronenberg as well. Yeah, because um, it's really this film is really Eraserhead, a Cronenberg movie. And maybe like the Terminator, like you combine them all, yeah. And it's also its own thing too, like and then, and that's like people just trying to explain it in a review. Like I've seen people in reviews just trying to like it's this movie and this movie and this movie and this movie. It's unique, and, and I'll I, give it that. You know, it's like, like but so really, it's its own thing. It just has you know. I'll give it that, but I don't think yeah. it uh, personally. I don't think it it needs to be held up to to those directors and those i don't movies. think it needs to be i just wish you know more people of those interests who are into those kind of you know if you're if chores, you're deep into you know, you know lynch's catalog or, yeah or you know anything cronenberg the sure yeah, yeah i could i could say check this out but yeah. I, I would say for like most people my opinion oh well, like yeah. i could not at what all what give a general recommendation for this uh i i would i'd say this is the the smallest of niches would find this underrated like it would be some buried treasure that they'd find and that's you for sure zach like you look like yeah i think you're the the minority on this one but it seems that way the minority there is is definitely like somewhat of a cult building for this movie but I just think it could be a bigger cult. I'm not asking. Yeah, because like it's mainstream. not the room, like cult status. No, uh, no, no, like no. the room or something like that. This is like cult status of of. This is a very. It seems like a generally, as far as total movie going uh, audience goes, this would be the tiniest of the tiny that would be uh, that would love this movie mm. because I I just can't see this has a very limited appeal. I feel John really liked this movie. Yeah, John's also got a weird. He's see, he fits that one because yeah. he's heavy into Lynch. Yep, he's heavy into uh, like Cronenberg and everything. He loves those that that's what type I'm of film. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I'm saying I can agree. If you are deep into that style of movie, you will like this. You will probably like this a lot. Mm-hmm. Everybody else <laughs> will feel just either confused uncomfortable like it's not it won't it might not be the most pleasant of experiences so just know yourself before you get into this movie if you like metal inside you you should see this movie too that's also for you (laughs) yeah if you're oh and if you're looking for a message of like uh technology taking over humanity maybe go somewhere else maybe don't (laughs) stick with this one because that's not exactly the the best the most effective use of that theme. I disagree. I, I, I think, I don't think it's maybe the most, but I think it's a neat way of doing it. I said, it. it's not. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, so is that your final thoughts? That's, that's final in that. I don't really think it's that overrated. No. You go ahead, Alex. Underrated. Yeah. Underrated. Oh, 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 really? Did I, say overrated? <laughs> I, I don't think it's that underrated. Yeah. Alex. I was, I just was just thinking Scarface, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Alex. 
Andrew, that was spoken like a true vanilla honky. There you go. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> so every movie and every film should show the audience something completely different that they have never seen, yeah. heard, or experienced before. Mm-hmm. This film definitely does that. Yep. Sure, you can take the... And I think there was a story and a plot. I will definitely say that. Yeah, absolutely. And you could have taken... A person could have taken that story and plot and told it in a very plain mm-hmm. and and straightforward, maybe even Japanese way. Yeah. I, I don't know sure. how they do it over there, but it could have been done that way. Oh, yeah. But he's, he's a young director, mm-hmm. and it's the late 1980s. Society is changing at that point. Mm-hmm. A lot of things are changing at that point, just as they're changing now. So... I think if you to tell a story like that, sometimes you need to go right off the barren path mm-hmm. and into the water and underneath the water. Mm-hmm. And you got to shake people up sometimes. Yeah. Even if the story itself might not be that strong, even if that's the case, that you can still tell it in a very interesting way. And I think that was done here, mm-hmm. especially with the, the visuals mm-hmm. and the audio that was put in. Like that, I loved it. Yeah. And... The the tumultuous storyline for the main character, it could be summed up from a line from Fight Club, which is, you met me at a very strange time in my life. Mm-hmm. Like if that connection can be made. And I wonder if there's a, a Criterion reissue for this film, because I think it could benefit from a little bit digital update. I think there actually was a Criterion release, Ooh. but it was on Laserdisc. Um, oh. So it was way back, right? If I, I might be wrong, but I feel like there was. Uh, but it was way back. And yeah, it would be cool if they did uh, put it on Blu-ray, you know, and update it. Because it'd yeah. be cool to see some cool featurettes and stuff if they could pull any out. Because, I mean, the director is still active. He still makes Good. films, stuff like that. They're really out there. You know, again, like I said, if you like this, you should check out his, uh, his filmography. Because they are, you know, it's really different. Um, Andrew liked Tokyo Fist, though, so that's really interesting. Tokyo Fist. Because um, I remember you liked that movie. That's the same director. It's only six years later. What's Tokyo Fist about? It's it's about a boxer. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Ah, I haven't seen that as much, yeah, too. Yeah, I don't know. But it's uh, it's about boxing. I know that much. Like I said, like risk-taking is a good thing. It just doesn't always pay off with everybody, right? So this didn't pay off with me. Mm. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure that a guy who's taking risks like that, I could see something else of his and really enjoy it. Yeah. So I, it's on a film by film basis. Oh, no, so. I mean, I get that too. Um, and this films, like I say, they do take risks. They're very out there and trying very different things. So if you like that, I mean, I highly recommend you check it out. But yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you can't go from watching Home Alone to the Philadelphia huh. story to to seven to yeah. this. Right. Like you. Sometimes, especially with with the music and this type of film, you have to build up to something like this in order to really enjoy it. Sure. Uh, industrial music is basically a mixture of metal and techno. Yeah, in a way. And it's yeah. it's got a grungy feel to it. Mm-hmm. I don't mean grunge like Nirvana grunge. No. I mean a dirty like feel grit. to it. Yeah, like yeah. a gritty feel to yeah. it. And that began in the I think it was the early to mid nineteen eighties. So if ministry was always like one of the big ones, yeah, kind of kicked it off, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. early mid eighties. It was like mid eighties, yeah, something yeah. like that, mid to like just into the late like yeah, like eighty six or something, yeah. So if a person can expose themselves to that type of music and find some enjoyment in it, and then again, you got to build up to it. And same with this type of movie, like it's very tumultuous, it's very all over the place. But if if you can watch enough of it and grasp it and understand it and wrap your head around it, I think you can get enjoyment out of it. And I definitely did. It's, like I said, it's a veering off the, the mainstream path of how stories are told. And I think every once in a while we need that. Mm-hmm. We definitely need that, especially in yeah. this type of format. Because look at the, the movies that we've all presented in the past 16 episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Take mine, for example. They're very straightforward. They're very by the book and, and maybe some messages. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, basically, there it is. Mm-hmm. Not much message behind it. This, mm-hmm. way off the beaten path of mainstream. Yeah. And we need that kind of storytelling every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So thank you for choosing this film. We yeah, definitely needed something like it. And yeah. I do think it's underrated. Even for North American audiences, some of them who are really into Japanese media. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been exposed to Japanese media, 
and I'm getting into it slowly. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great way to not only get into that, but get into something different. Mm -hmm. Some, yeah, yeah. It's definitely different. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, Jack, your final thoughts? Um, yeah, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> and Rylan, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds like my opinion. Um, yeah, overall, um, it's it's kind of hard because I, I agree pretty much a lot with what Andrew is saying. Um, I, I just think, yeah, I got to see it, experience it, and I don't regret seeing it. Um, I'm glad I saw it, but. To be perfectly honest, based on where you have it, Zach, yeah, yeah, I think it's a tad overrated. Okay, um, I mean that's me personally, though. No, that's fair, but that but high. given like I, I kind of just briefly looked at looked up like kind of like reviews. Oh, you did just briefly, just seeing like where it's like on the tomato meter, what mm. everyone else kind of thought about yeah. it, and even where where they're all at. I'm just like, yeah, it's like I don't know. To me, it didn't really blow my mind in terms of like I never saw like this type of filmmaking before i've seen this type of filmmaking before it's just again i've never seen this type of movie in terms of like with the kinetic energy with the editing yeah that's really what was the main draw to it yeah but i've seen stuff like that before with the quick like stop motion all that so overall nothing to me was really groundbreaking and i've seen Hmm. better art house films overall but like i said there's a lot there's too many good things in this movie for me to say that it's not worth seeing right yeah um like i said the visuals and the how it blends with the music and the sound editing and the quick the quick short run time and i feel like this is a this movie did influence on how a lot of music videos are made sure especially mm-hmm. throughout the 90s like mm-hmm. that sort of became a very big thing mm-hmm. um but i have no d- desire to see this again it doesn't draw me in um, and it's not that I'm not into these type of movies. Mm-hmm. I've seen slow paced or really arty films and I've gotten a lot out of it. Yeah. But I kind of, like I said, we kind of have an idea of what this film was trying to say. Mm-hmm. But again, it wasn't, didn't give, you, didn't give me at least a clear answer of what I was trying to say. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I, I have interest in seeing the sequels. But mm-hmm. this one, I don't know. I'm kind of, I, mm-hmm. I have, besides again, this group of people, I don't know who I would show this to. I personally don't have any desire to see it again, and I yeah. think it's like I said, I think it's a tad overrated um, in terms of art house films. But that doesn't mean it's bad or a bad movie. Mm-hmm. I think it's just it's it's okay. So mm-hmm. overall, that's kind of what I think of it. Cool. And Ryan was Ryan think of this this whole thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I can't say that I know enough about art house cinema or Japanese cinema to say in general whether this is underrated or not. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I would think it's for myself. I think it's a little overrated. I just, mm-hmm. I, I, it was, I felt like, I think, um, it was Jack who said that you said, you said the assault on the senses. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I kind Good of, time. yeah, it was just kind of an unrelenting barrage of just like input. Mm. And I don't know. I prefer, I, I guess I prefer a film that does allow you to put the pieces together while you're watching it okay. rather than just kind of dumping it all on you mm-hmm. but um yeah this is it's like a it's a it's a very hectic whirlwind experience and i mean i'm kind of with jack in the sense that like i'm glad i watched it because mm-hmm. like i know what the deal is now i know what it's all about um i might be willing to sit down and watch it again and see mm-hmm. if i can't get something more out of it next time and right. i mean i'm mm-hmm. kind of fascinated by those sequels too so those yeah they get viewed at some point it's it's definitely interesting i mean i if i recall correctly they do bump up the runtime but it's also not as kinetic like then this one's non-stop it. if it's longer i don't want to watch it it's like an hour and a half are they also filled with the potato with a potato. Um, I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, obviously the one that's way more recent, it actually came out, I think, in like 2011, the third one. So it's like way later than the first two. So, I mean, I would say like the second one, I mean, it's it's in color now. Um, you know, I think they have a little more money and things, but it's mm. it's still pretty raw and things. It's, it's definitely like a higher budget and production, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, mm. than the first one. And then, of course, the third one, I would say, is even higher and... You've got the score change up with Trent Reznor and stuff like that. That would be interesting. It's interesting, yeah. Um, but again, it's like, you know, if you're into this sort of thing, if you're not, then I mean heed with caution, obviously. But um, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I was going to say, Alex, if you want like more 
of something like that. I do. <laughs> like, something like that in the sense of like an art house, but like let's flip the script and go completely opposite. A Serbian no, film. No frantic energy. No, like art house in the sense of, of like uh, it's abstract and uh, how the sound complements the uh, uh, kind of uh, is is very much uh, a part of what you're seeing visually. Um, like even even last year I saw one like that, but it was the opposite. It wasn't frantic. It was slow. OK, so you flip it in terms of the pacing, um, but also short. Mm-hmm. So it, it's also pretty damn short, I think. Um, but I saw Ghost Story. I've been telling Zach about oh, here that. we go but no that one's that it's very similar right like uh this one's all four three right it was yeah all four three they do it like uh even smaller than that whatever it was it's very very jarring when you first look at it because you're like what are they going for mm-hmm. but um yeah so that gives you an idea of like it is kind of art housey and i could mm-hmm. see why it was missed last year but that's recent so mm-hmm. like that's something where it's kind of the same deal like dialogue is like almost non-existent you know, uh, it's all heavily, it's all, it's all about how the sound complements what you're seeing visually. And it's mm-hmm. visually very all over the place and kind of crazy. Um, but much, much slower, much, much mm-hmm. slower. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where, yeah, like if you're looking for something like that, that is also underrated just by nature of what it was like that came out last year. And I, 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 not a lot of people saw it. I think I saw it like within the opening week and there were like, I, it was so weird because I was the first one in that theater. There's mm-hmm. nobody else. And then, and this is like the theater where like people go to see some art house movies. Like they have them because people will go see them. There's like four people in the theater. And I was like, yeah, okay. So, and yeah, I, like nobody's seen it. Like I keep trying to push it on on like you zach mm-hmm. right and then to the point where you think it's funny right yeah i mean which you bring is it cool. into a podcast and you're like ghost story let's plug it <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just making a point though Netflix. like uh, because it's hard for me to like uh, you're always making comparisons when you're seeing a movie so mm-hmm. like uh you know for me th- that actually was pretty comparable as, as like an art house movie in terms of not at all the plot not remotely no in terms of the theme or the pacing mm-hmm. but just kind of this the art house style yeah, in, yeah. in its style in terms of music and visuals mm. and, and how they complement each other and kind of the pacing and 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 it, they kind of mirror each other they're almost exact opposites right so mm. it's um yeah i don't know yeah i don't know like if you're interested in something like that i was gonna make that kind of recommendation but the, I, I it's not so that's why i say like in terms of how unique it is like oh it's so unique it's like a i've seen other things that definitely the what i'm talking about is a lot more recent but i feel like it's not wholly unique but i think just the pacing of it was kind of its own and and i would add to that enter the void yeah 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 i really like Enter the void is another assault on the senses like that and that's like a a big stretch out a, a at least um, in, when compared to this film, like, it's like that's a three two hour and movie. a half, three, three hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a that's a lot harder, I would say, to, yeah. to watch. That's an experience life. film for sure. That's I mean, it's like, oh, what is life like after death? And like, no, I, I'm just, just saying like voyage. harder in the sense of like, oh, it's it. You just got a lot to go through. It's that it, too. Yeah, yeah, time the time investment, like, cause uh, like a movie like this. Can you imagine if this movie was that length? Like two and a half mm. hours or something. No, it couldn't be. My well, God, this movie, mentally no, that would work. drain me. Like, well, no, I'd you just done. couldn't. And I'm with you there too. I think yeah. it's the perfect runtime for yep. if you're just gonna go balls to the wall the whole time. And like, I, I think this is the perfect runtime. And I think it, that's almost something special about the movie too. By the way, do you know why there's only four people in uh, your theater for Ghost Story? I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't need that. Because the only people that watch Ghost Stories are ghosts. Go. Great, great, great. Yeah, great. Now he's spooked. Andrew's spooked now. Great, this episode's ruined now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Tetsu the Iron Man. Yes, yeah. this this uh, this podcast episode is officially longer than the action movie itself. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that. I knew it would be. I knew it. You're, You're first. <laughs> you got about 15 minutes over it. So. 17. Nice. 17? Uh, All yeah. right. Tetsu the Iron Man, it gets your dick hard. Might make you drill some stuff with it if you get really excited, but overall... I think it's a good watch. Alex thinks it's a good watch. Everybody else? They can all go, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) You know, they kind of dig it. They kind of don't. Somewhere on that line. It has some merit, and I 
think some good themes from yeah. what I could decipher. It's got some good points. Um <laughs> Overall, you, get so. some, you mean with that drill dick? That's, it reminds exactly me that there are a lot of other there. things that I would rather be doing. <laughs> I'm with you there. <laughs> so whether you're drilling or you're into, you know, getting hit by cars. Yeah, getting hit by cars. Let's say New World on it. I mean, you know, this is it for you. And uh, until next time, who's next? Andrew's next, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mine's like there could the be any, any other <laughs> opposite end kind of movie. It's relief. Let's just call it relief. Sure. And it's a it's it's a film that I've seen too, and uh, I'm excited to relive these memories. Yeah. But until let's, let's chill out. Let's chill out a little bit. Let's relax a little bit now. But until next time, folks, stay sexy. <laughs>